We are currently in Salihar, the capital of Russia's Yamal. Our aim is to get to the town of Labutnangi, where Ukrainian filmmaker Alex Sov is imprisoned. The town is located on the other side of the Ob River, and you can only get there by ferry. We're going to take a look at how this journey changes at different times of the year. Anatoly works as a security guard at the ferry port in Salihard. He came here 20 years ago in hope of getting rich. But this hope did not materialize. Anatoly works two jobs so that he can pay his mortgage. We bought an apartment in a wooden house. In Salihard? Yeah. They don't build these wooden buildings anymore. They remain on the outskirts of the town, where they're not planning to build anything. I just swallowed a mosquito. Mosquitoes here are a nightmare, by the way. And now I've just eaten one in front of you. <laughs> However, he likes it here in Yamal. He thinks it's the most beautiful town in the world. Beautiful. These big ice flows tip over. We even have a tradition here. We gather, light bonfires. It looks beautiful. And we've made it into a holiday here. But this site is not enjoyed by everyone. When the ice drifts, getting from Salihad to Labutnangi and back is only possible by helicopter. Food and goods delivery stop. This weather can last for several days. A helicopter ride can cost close to $20. Therefore, the residents prefer not to go to work when this happens. Of course, people are not just going to get a helicopter to work when the roads are bad. They stay where they are, book a hotel, hostel and they just wait it out until the ferry opens. Anatoly has only flown in a helicopter once. I needed to get a train. I was still late for my train because of that helicopter, because it was accumulating passengers. I also sat there waiting for the helicopter. Then I had to sit and wait for another train at the station. So there you go. We're in meltdown. The diesel generator has frozen. The barriers aren't working. This is a hovercraft. This is what they use during ice drifts on the river. But it doesn't always help. In some weather conditions, you can only get to the other side by helicopter. Hovercrafts can only operate when the ice is fragile or broken into small pieces. It is dangerous at any other time. Now, in July, the boats are not in use. There is now only the ferry service, which runs around the clock. It carries hundreds of cars and people daily. The ferry depends on the capacity of the vehicle. For example, a motorcycle can cross for around $1.50, whereas heavy goods and vehicles can pay up to around $128. However, pedestrians ride here for free. But despite the fact it's possible to get to the other side of the river in almost any weather conditions, the locals are not satisfied. They are awaiting construction of a bridge across the river, which they were promised decades ago. A lot of people just go to work from Labitnangi to Salyard, from Salyard to Labitnangi, and back again. And cars always go back and forth. Some people just travel for fun too. Are there lines at peak time? Of course, the lines go on for half a kilometer, and staff work hard printing the receipts. It gets very busy here. So there could actually be a traffic jam straight ahead here? Yeah, yeah. What time is that? Before lunch, basically, at 11 or 12. It's a lot better in winter, just drive straight across on the ice. But everyone's waiting for the bridge, for which they've already laid out plans for. They build it soon. What's getting in the way of construction? Well, the budget, of course. It costs a lot of money. They've already built one in Crimea. You're not worse than them. As you can see, there was political interest in building one in Crimea. But who's going to build one here in the wilderness? It's the worst for the people who are used to getting between Salihard and Labutnangi by car. In the period when the ferry port has already closed and the temporary ice road hasn't opened yet, it's impossible to take the journey in a car. The richest people have two cars for this, one in each bank on the river. Tell me, does it upset you that they've already built the bridge in Crimea and not here? Yes, it does. Why? Well, because it does. What do you mean, why? I've lived here my whole life, and as I remember, We've only ever used the ferry, only the ferry, and in the winter, over the ice. Fair enough, in the winter. It's not that bad because the road is sort of fine. You can drive without delays, without anything happening. But here you can spend in queues an hour and a half, 
sometimes two hours. And they built it straight away for them. They built it straight away for them. Well, yeah, it's quite expensive. Last year it was a little cheaper. They put up the prices now. All they do is promise, but it won't happen. How many, many years have they promised the bridge? Would you like it? Of course I would. Sometimes you have to cross three times a day. A smaller car like this costs two and a half dollars. Those ones are more expensive. Every trip is around five dollars. The authorities have promised to start constructing a bridge next year. Some believe that the residents' dream will come true, but some think that they're waiting for nothing. Ferry operator Yakov is certain that even if the bridge is built, this is not a reason to celebrate. I don't care. If this bridge is built, how long will it last? Because of the permafrost, they won't be able to lay down any poles or whatever. I think it will take a long time. It could sag or collapse. Summer ends quickly in Yamal. By August, it's already snowing. The ferry port will close once again. Cars and passengers are left stranded, and people continue to wait for this bridge. They have already built one in Crimea. Maybe they will turn their attention to the north. Yamal? Yes, this is the best place to live. Why? Do you not like it? This is only our second day here, so we're still learning. Stay longer and you will find out. I'm waiting to see this on the TV. I came here 40 years ago. I was supposed to stay for two years, but here I am today. Both my children and grandchildren live here. And you're all happy here? Of course. Look how beautiful it is. Look at the river. The people are good here. 